Did you know that uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is only available on the Super Nintendo? It was on Wii Virtual Console, but uh, that's gone now. Uh, but luckily it was available on the Super Nintendo Classic. Yeah. All you have to do is beat all four original Final Fantasy games in less than 100 days, email Nintendo, and they'll send you a little code to put in on your system, and you'll get Mystic Quest. Uh, here it is. It's my recommended way to play the game. Through legitimate means. Howdy everybody, welcome to the Independence Day Special. What do you mean it's been a week since July 4th? I don't care. This game is the most USA Final Fantasy and I'm gonna take the time to celebrate it, so indulge me. You may be wondering how is this game USA? It's still Final Fantasy, it's still made in Japan. It, does it take place in America? No it doesn't, idiot. See this game has a bit of an interesting history. Final Fantasy 4 aka Final Fantasy 2 has shown up in the West and it was just critically acclaimed, as you might imagine. It still is to this day. It didn't sell as much as they'd hoped, not even a fraction of what it sold in Japan. So Square was thinking, we gotta start really pushing Final Fantasy. But they thought, Americans are dumb. As they've thought throughout history with games being re-released under different names for us because they needed to be easier and stuff like that. Nobody trusted the U.S. with video games. I don't understand why. What, are we dumb or something? Final Fantasy V was on the way. And they were like, this has a job system. This is a little complex. It's a little more in-depth than 4 or any of the ones that we've released in the U.S. so far. We need something that will draw them in. They're dumb, peanut-sized brains. Let's create a game that is specifically designed for beginners. And here we have Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. It actually came out in the US first. It was literally made for us. It did come out in Japan later and they called it Final Fantasy USA. And that was all that audience needed to know to figure out, oh, this is a game for dumb babies. Okay, got it, I'll skip that one. The idea was to t kind of train us up for the future for like Final Fantasy V or whatever was coming next. The game is easy. It doesn't have random encounters. You have to go up to the enemies and attack them. There's no overworld exploration. You go from dot to dot, like in Mario or something. And battles are as riveting as mashing A over and over because there's no strategy. You just kind of hit the A button, do the damage. Hopefully you kill him. Hopefully? Heal when you get hurt. It is the most basic of basic in terms of RPGs. The gameplay I would kind of describe as Final Fantasy Adventure if you had to do turn-based battles instead of just swinging your sword like a normal person. And if that sounds like kind of dumb, it is. Imagine if in a Zelda game you walk into a dungeon room, there's five enemies, and instead of just swiping them, you go up to them, hit A, go into a battle, and like a minute later, after mashing A a bunch of times, you come out and then you go to the next guy. That is what this game is like. At first you're thinking, oh, no random battles. Well, that's cool. I can just explore at my will and I can fight who I want. No. The vast majority of level design in this game consists of a one block path that you have to go across for some reason. And there's like five enemies placed in that block and you have no choice but to fight them. It's not random. It's predetermined and you have to fight pretty much everybody. Like I said earlier, there's really no depth to the gameplay at all. You mash A, you got some spells, but you don't want to use them because you want to save them for the boss. But then it doesn't matter because you get items that heal all your magic instantly. You have two party members total, you and a guest, but they're the same. You just, you just mash A with them too, and you do the most damage and you beat the guy. In terms of the exploration, the Final Fantasy Adventure aspect of it, there's some kind of puzzly stuff. The jump button from Legend 3 is back. I didn't expect to see that. Actually, now that I think about it, this game really feels like a Game Boy game. 
I've noticed some assets carried over directly from the Game Boy games. That jump button from Legend 3 is there. The battle screen in general looks very similar to Legend 3. It makes me wonder if this started out as a Game Boy game because at first thought, when you would think of a Final Fantasy Game Boy game, this is kind of what I pictured. Like, very streamlined, very simple. So you can grab it on the go and move. It really makes you appreciate the Legend trilogy that I just played. Because there's so much going on in those games. In terms of story and gameplay, there's a lot to think about. Like, they really were ahead of their time. I complained about them a lot. But those games are pretty legit. You get to this one and like, this is a home console game? I get the whole idea of making it simple for for us dumb Americans, but if the idea was to get us ready for future games, this doesn't accomplish that either. It's so simple that you're not learning anything about an RPG, you're learning how to mash A. When I was a kid and I kinda steered clear of RPGs in general because I wasn't into them, this is why I pictured them all being like this. There's really no story in this game, collect the crystals, big surprise. And the gameplay is just grinded to a halt, every dungeon is just fight, 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 fight. If it's not a dungeon on the overworld map, there are these battle areas where you just press A and you're in a battle. And there's like 10 in a row on that space until you win. And sometimes you get an item for it, sometimes, most of the time, you get nothing. It's just 10 battles, like it's a way to bulk up your character or something, as if you need to do that in this game. And as easy as it is, it's interesting to see that sometimes you get into an unfair battle that you will lose instantly. The stone spell in this game, like in any Final Fantasy game, you just get, boom, you're stone now. You're basically dead. You can't do anything about it unless your other party member heals you. But you can walk into a battle with three Medusas, and they'll all use stone on you and your other character. You die. You end right there. Doesn't matter how much health you got stoned, you're dead. Of course, you could immediately restart the battle, like in the other Game Boy games, so... I guess that's good, but... The point is, this game doesn't show any challenge. It's designed poorly, it's not fun in the battle mechanic in any way, and outside of a child, I don't see anybody enjoying this. I was gonna go on a trip yesterday. I went to the airport, I missed the flight, the trip got cancelled. I spent the rest of the day playing Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. <laughs> I played for like eight hours. I was just sad and and playing. And I beat it that day. And I was still bored out of my mind. I was just... You can only mash A for so long before you start to go a little bit insane. I do like the music in this game. It was very smooth and calming. The town theme changes depending on like what element you're in, like, the, the lava world is very snappy. I'm gonna play that right now. There is some charm. When you do enough damage to an enemy but don't kill it, they might change their sprite into something, like, weaken, like there'll be a band-aid on them or something. The Medusa will, like, become bald. So you know, like, they're close to death. It's kind of funny. My favorite one is the hag, because they're like a water serpent. But then when they're close to death, they just go like... And that's it. <laughs> and you kill them. That always made me laugh. The enemies like to fart on death. <laughs> Overall, it's just a very bizarre experience. And really, I I'm done. with. I'm done there. Like, that's I've said everything. Boring. Some charm wouldn't recommend. Especially when the only way to play is on your legitimate Super Nintendo console. This might be one of the shortest reviews. So in conclusion, this weird experiment to get Americans into RPGs even though people already were was just a weird thing to make an entire game on. The end of the story is the game didn't sell very well either. The reviews were mediocre because the game was not Many people who weren't into RPGs got this because they weren't into RPGs and they didn't hear it was good. The people who were into RPGs, like people who played 4, were completely insulted by this game because Square basically called them idiots. <laughs> oh, you liked, 
You played four all the way through. Good game, huh? Well, you're not smart enough to play five. Here's this. And like, imagine going from Mystic Quest to four. Like, the idea is that you're being trained to play those more complex games, but then you'll go into four and you'll be like, I'm walking in a, in a cave and all of a sudden I'm in a battle? What? Are the enemies invisible or something? Like, you don't even know a concept of random encounters. You don't even know how sh battle strategy works because there's no strategy in that game. Your ATB bar will fill and you'll be like, what the hell is that? Like, this doesn't train you for anything in Final Fantasy. <laughs> the worst of it all? Final Fantasy V didn't come out in the US. Not until a re-release later. This is basically what we got instead. RIP. But the story's to be continued because Final Fantasy did come out on the PS1 and the Game Boy Advance. And we're gonna jump in next time. We're gonna find out, are Americans really that dumb? Is this game too complicated for our dumb little American heads? Can't wait. Jumping into the next one, number five, next time. Happy 4th of July, I guess. <laughs>